Hello, I'm George Malin, the Managing Editor of IoT Now, and welcome to today's webinar, the topic of which is how eSIM is forging a new future in IoT for the 2020s. eSIM has been gathering traction for the last few years, with lots of attention focused on the consumer market. However, there's an enormous opportunity in the enterprise and IoT marketplaces that is starting to be engaged with by organisations of all types. The omens are good, and analyst firms seem positive. Juniper Research, for example, has reported that adoption of eSIMs will grow by 350% over the next five years to exceed 1 billion eSIMs globally by 2024. The firm also uh, projects that the total number of IoT connections will reach 83 billion uh, by 2024. Uh, that's rising from 35 billion connections uh, this year. Um, uh, another firm, Counterpoint Research, uh, has estimated that shipments of eSIM-based devices will reach almost 2 billion units by 2025, and that's up from 364 million in 2018. So it's clear there's good traction starting to appear, and this uh, makes now an ideal time to assess what the future looks like, uh, looks like for eSIMs over the coming decade. To assist us in that, I'm delighted to welcome speakers from three companies, ST, Truephone and DigiKey Electronics. They're going to discuss the key trends that are influencing this drive towards eSIM enabled solutions, why it's happening now, and the different environments and use cases that are influencing this change. I should also point out that the speakers will be staying on after their presentations to take questions from the audience. To participate, simply enter your question into the panel on your screen and I'll put it to them later. Now to set the scene, let's turn to the first of today's audience polls. This one is about IoT solutions adoption. And the question is, how far are you currently on your IoT project journey? And the three possible responses are, this is my first IoT solution or project. The second possibility is we've done a few projects. And the third possibility is this is central uh, to our business strategy for the future. And uh, I'll just give that a few minutes to settle down uh, with the voting. Um, I think I'll read the uh, question and response again. How far are you currently on your IoT project? And the possible responses are, this is my first uh, IoT solution or project. Uh, the second possibility is we've done a few projects. And the third is uh, it's a central part of our business strategy. I think the voting is probably settled down and it looks like a narrow lead of about 37% for those that have done a few projects and uh, followed closely by uh, people who have just trialing a first project and those who are at the other extreme. Um, that's very interesting. Let's turn and welcome uh, Tom Mason from Truefone. Tom, um, was that what you expected to see? Yes, good morning. Um, yeah, actually uh, going through the numbers that uh, is, is fairly in line with what we've been seeing as we're uh, working with customers and assessing the marketplace, uh, around 40% or so, um, there's, a, there's, there's that uh, cross between uh, customer, customers and companies who, have, uh, are, who are uh, considering IoT and putting that in their roadmap or those that have already uh, deployed and are, are rolled out. So these numbers are uh, very much in line with what we see in the marketplace with huge growth potential coming. So it's very good. Great. Thank, thank you, Tom. Um, let's turn over to you to start the session. And uh, yeah, you, you have the floor now, Tom. Thanks very much. Terrific. All right, so good morning. Uh, before we introduce ourselves, uh, why are we here? As George was uh, starting to explain in the very interesting poll, we'll see how that changes throughout the, throughout the, the call and, and post. We are at a really interesting and exciting inflection point when it comes to eSIM adoption in consumer enterprise and IoT devices. The momentum for eSIM is clearly accelerating with smartphones, smartwatches, and connected, connected cars leading the way. And now we're seeing new use cases emerging enabled by eSIM across every single vertical in business. A new handset with eSIM support hits the market every month, and there's growing demand among the IoT device manufacturers exploring eSIM to future-proof their devices. We are seeing huge growth in the markets, but there's a lot more to come, as you see. 
One billion eSIM enabled devices are expected to ship annually by the year 2023. Today, we will explore the opportunities of eSIM with a focus on IoT. IoT has long been seen as a promising area for eSIM. However, adoption has been low relative to the long term potential. Over 40% of companies today believe eSIM is critical to, to achieve success in their current and future deployments. This means there is already a very large and growing business opportunity out there. How do we capture and support these opportunities? How do we help customers successfully scale? Security is critical. How do we help you manage costs of your deployments? I'm very proud to introduce our unique partnership of DigiKey, ST Microelectronics, and TruePhone. ST, TruePhone, and DigiKey have come together to deliver a comprehensive, flexible, end-to-end -end solution for businesses of all sizes. Together, we bring a wealth of IoT capability and experience to businesses like yours, looking to deploy at scale and speed, taking advantage of eSIM and all the latest IoT devices and applications. My name is Tom Mason. It's funny to, to talk and not introduce ourselves right ahead of time, but uh, Tom Mason, I'm Vice President of Sales and Business Development at TruePhone. TruePhone, a little bit about TruePhone. We were founded in 2006, and since then we have built and developed state-of-the-art SIM software with our own multi mz applets, an intuitive SIM management platform, and a powerful global connectivity network. Today we have over 4 million eSIMs provisioned, there are 15,000 eSIMs downloaded every, sing downloaded every single day. We have two G GSMA accredited RSP data centers globally, and we operate nine NVMOs scattered around the world, giving us a very unique global perspective. We were the first company to launch an eSIM app on Apple iOS to provide them with global connectivity. We have over 3,500 corporate customers, including 10 of the world's top 12 banks. Our headquarters are in London. Our technical and engineering team is based in Lisbon, Portugal. We have 16 offices across four continents and continue to expand globally with our eSIM and connectivity services. Danny? Hi, everyone. So I'm Danny Djibo. I'm product marketing manager for ST Microelectronics in the Secure Microcontroller division. I'm in charge of SIM and embedded SIM solution for the M2M, IoT, industrial and automotive market. And today uh, we are really pleased to uh, to join uh, TruePhone and DigiKeeve to introduce uh, this uh, eSIM solution. Hello everyone, my name is Robbie Paul. I'm the Director of Business Development for IoT here at DigiKey Electronics. The IoT initiative is a little bit different at DigiKey in that we're more focused on systems and solutions. Traditionally, DigiKey Electronics is known for selling components and board level products. With our IoT focus, we want to build on that legacy and partner with great companies like TruePhone and SD Micro to bring more integrated solutions to our customers. I'm thrilled to be here today to talk about our latest partnership and end to end solution in cellular connectivity. So let's jump right into it. Traditional SIM cards are everywhere. They're great at enabling connectivity, but are a bit cumbersome to integrate into IoT products. SIM cards have an efficiency impact in all phases of deployment, including production, enabling, distribution, and ongoing maintenance. They add manufacturing complexity and make automation more challenging. Since network operators are regional, or in many cases national, creating products that work globally out of the box is challenging. The time to market is also extended due to a complex rollout and the need for regional forecasting. All of these issues are magnified when logistics and distribution partners are brought in. We have to maintain hundreds of SKUs Scaling up and down to meet customer demand is very challenging. Frankly, this is one of the main reasons DigiKey Electronics has stayed away from this market now. Ongoing maintenance is not any easier. 
Imagine you had hundreds or thousands of IoT devices deployed and you wanted to change network operators. What a tedious and expensive process that would be to manually swap out SIM cards in the field. An eSIM or embedded SIM aims to change all that. Now, a quick point of clarification. You may have heard the term EUICC. How similar or different is this from an eSIM? Well, I think about it as hardware versus software. eSIM is the hardware, right? the physical chip that is soldered onto the PC board. EUICC is the software in the SIM that enables the user to switch network operators or carriers. Note that EUICC is a technology that's available for both removable SIM cards as well as eSIMs. So what's so great about an eSIM? Well, for starters, an eSIM is remote, remotely programmable. Imagine being able to send an over-the-air OTA update to an IoT device that's already in the field and be able to change network operators. So fundamentally what that does is it, it switches the ownership from the network operator to the customer, right? Furthermore, it's controlled by the user. The user selects the carrier and the data plan and can, can change numbers at will. And eSIM works worldwide since there are multiple profiles programmed into the eSIM right out of the box. When you first light up an eSIM, it looks for the best network operator in that particular area or geography. This gives the power of choice back to the customer and the end users. This is a key point. Now, there are many new entrants and new services disrupting connectivity. And I think all of this competition is really good for the market, especially an emerging one like cellular connectivity for IoT. SIM vendors are becoming service providers and the number of MVNOs are proliferating. This transformation is also enabling OEMs to add value by designing products that are truly global with fewer SKUs. And this ultimately helps distributors like Digikey Electronics to keep fewer parts in stock. All of this increases efficiency and reduces cost across the whole value chain. And this ultimately brings the cost down for all customers and end users. Now, embedded SIMs are not entirely new. The automotive market has been using eSIMs primarily because of their high reliability requirements. As you know, cars and trucks operate in harsh environments with temperature fluctuations and extreme vibration. This use case is perfect for soldered in place eSIMs. As Tom mentioned, consumer devices were jump-started with eSIM usage by Apple a few years ago. All the latest iPhones and iPads are equipped with dual SIMs, one that's soldered on and the other one removable. Now, I see the advantages of eSIMs in these primary markets seeding other adjacent markets like wearables, industrial, medical, and home automation. Take asset tracking application, for example. The eSIM can be used to register the asset tracker on multiple operators, thus greatly simplifying international roaming. Now, even with the benefits and simplicity that eSIMs provide, partnerships are still the best path to success. So DigiKey has teamed up with TruePhone and SD Micro. And we each bring our strengths in hardware, the software platform, and e-commerce. In this partnership, we can provide an end-to-end -end solution in cellular connectivity that will accelerate global IoT products and worldwide deployments. And now I'd like to pass the baton back to Tom from TruePhone. Tom, take it away. All right, thanks, Robbie. Great stuff. Imagine taking a device with our secure embedded SIM, connecting that device to a mobile network anywhere in the world straight out of the box. TruePhone is the only digital cellular connectivity provider that has developed and operates our own GSMA compliant eSIM with remote SIM provisioning and, and rides on a global mobile core network. TruePhone, DigiKey, and ST 
are offering a single global solution for IoT deployments by bringing together technologies that have traditionally only been available from many multiple siloed vendors. The result we have is a sim seamless integration and a single DNA for all key aspects of your IoT device solution. Make it, making it a future-proof solution, having eSIM as the standard and all the benefits of remote SIM provisioning. We have a secure single core network, and this is essential as you will be roaming in 400 plus networks around the world, giving you access to a connectivity management platform where you can manage your deployment across the world, supporting your customers and all your machines. TruePhone, DigiKey, and ST is the only bundled provider that has developed and operates its own GSMA compliant eSIM, RSP, and global mobile network. This means we are not relying on third parties, enabling us to offer a secure, flexible, and independent service, and enabling you to harness the potential of all the emerging technologies. The fantastic growth we have seen and saw in 2019 is the culmination of years of investment and expertise in eSIM technology, making us the go-to provider for operators, OEMs, and IoT enterprises seeking partial or complete eSIM support. Our partnership with Apple that we've mentioned meant that TruePhone had an app-based consumer eSIM solution providing global connectivity ready when the iPhone handsets were launched. Our work with a major Android-based OEM means we also have the same service available on Android. We've mentioned a couple times working off of the IoT managed platform. The platform allows customers like yourselves to manage their connectivity services provided by TruePhone, DigiKey, and ST. The platform controls the full life cycle of connectivity subscriptions, devices, and your SIM cards. This enables you to reduce your time to market and quickly capitalize on the new M2M -M IoT related revenues out there. Our portal and vast library of APIs allows you to monitor, manage, and analyze your SIM inventory and to automate the deployment and operation of your connected devices. Some key features to highlight, you have access to real-time information about your SIM cards. You can change your rate plans, access your account invoices, suspend and unsuspend SIM cards for data, SMS, and other services and features. This display which device the SIM and the IMEI are currently working on. You can send SMSs and plat from, from the platform to the SIM. Authorize or not data sessions, tear down ongoing data sessions, create uses reports, create usage reports and event rules, see all the historical data related to your device. The power of eSIM, the power of one, simple and secure IoT mobile, mobile connectivity at the touch of a button. Our global mobile network is designed from the ground up to scale the deployment of devices across the globe, regardless of bandwidth, power, and scale specifics with one single predictable partner. It's a true single network for every one of your devices. The unique de network design enables us to bring together our many MVNO and roaming access agreements into a single network to, to create a global footprint of the best carriers. The solution is totally transparent to the end user and changes can be made dynamically over the air. Again, to mention, we have our single core network, which connects to the best local networks, ensuring the highest quality and connect continuity for your IoT devices. We have new, new agreements added automatically to ensure availability of all the best rates and connect, connectivity quality across the world. Our patented multi mg technology to switch to the best network carriers is, is available and, and live. Multi-network access technologies on 2G, 3G, 4G, and LTM. We have NBIOT on the roadmap. Global scale and very low latency. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Denny. Thanks, Tom. Indeed, 
a cellular connectivity solution increases network coverage and it brings this flexibility on the connectivity. In this way, a device can always be connected to the network and finally, the customer is able to manage and control all assets of his device everywhere and in real time. Actually, it gives us the opportunity to create, to define new use cases, new device. We can imagine that any device can be connected. So now I suggest that we focus on this device. Are we really able to connect everything? In fact, it's easy to understand that an eSIM solution for a toy and an eSIM for a car have different requirements, mainly because the environment is different. Let's review these differences. First of all, how could we split this global M2M market? From our point of view, we can identify three different groups. The first one is the IoT, the Internet of Things. This group is not really impacted by the environment. It requires basic behavior with standard requirement. We can have this solution in a drone, in hotspot device, or a toy. The next one is industrial. This group is impacted by the environment. We need additional robustness. So we include a specific requirement with more stress test qualification. In this group, you can, could find all the smart metering, tracker, and industrial device. And the next one is the automotive. This one is strongly impacted by the environment. We need robustness and specific automotive qualification. So in this case, we include a specific requirement for this domain. In this case, in this um, domain, you can use connectivity for entertainment, for the music, but also for safety application, example, for emergency call. Now, based on this segmentation, let me introduce to you the main difference between each group. Usually, we identify, we identify a difference on reliability, lifetime, and the temperature range. On the reliability, the first specification, the M2M AT specification, define the basic requirement for the eSIM for all machine-to-machine -machine environment. It defines some parameters like moisture, humidity. This is basic. After, you have the industrial uh, specification with the GDEC. In addition to this M2M AT specification, it includes additional stress tests to qualify a specific condition. Example, we have some human body model qualification to protect against electrostatic discharge. And the last one, we, on the automotive, we have a ASQ 100 qualification. This is a test qualification dedicated for the automotive. It defines different levels, mainly uh, related to the temperature range. Usually for the SIM, level two is required. We will see uh, right after what does it mean level two. The base, this qualification is based on a GDEC with additional constraint. Let me take on one example. In industrial, we compare the component state before and after the test at only 25 degrees. In this one, we compare the state before and after at 25 and also to all extreme temperature. The next point is the device lifetime. Usually, the eSIM lifetime match with the lifetime of the device. The minimum for the IoT is 10 years. It's defined by the Etsy. And after, we increase this one in uh, industrial and also for the automotive. The last one, last topic is the temperature. On IoT, it's the standard temperature range, minus 25 degrees plus 85 degrees. This is the minimum temperature defined by the Etsy for the machine to machine. After, you have industrial and the automotive require minus 40 plus 105 degrees. And this, uh, this level two correspond to this uh, temperature range. So as you can see, the environment is really important and has an impact on the solution. Then are we really able to connect everything? Yes, we just have to take into account this requirement. There are also different levels of security, not directly impacted by the environment, Mainly, we can identify three different levels. The first 
is a SIEM and embedded SIEM solution is a tamper resistant secure element. It means that by default, the customer has a good security level. After, based on this secure element, we can have also the a common criteria certification to make sure that all assets, algo, crypto inside this solution are really secured. And finally, we have the GSMA certification for all eSIM GSMA solution. Based on common criteria, this certification guarantees the security and also the interoperability of this solution. In, this, in the end, you understand that because you have all these different requirement environment and the, on the security, you could find different SIM and embedded SIM solution. For example, with our ST4 SIM product family, we define three ST4 SIM subfamily able to address these three different types of market S for the IoT, M for industrial, and A for the automotive. Each subfamily is compliant to the different hardware qualification and has different packages. On top of this hardware, there is a wide range of SIM and embedded SIM solution from the legacy SIM card to the GSMA embedded SIM solution. And finally, but not the least, our partner Trufon provides the connectivity and the platform. It may seem difficult to understand all eSIM ecosystem at first, but in fact, it is really simple. In my last slide, I will explain the ecosystem and who do does what. On one side, ST provides ST for SIM solution. It's the eSIM solution with the connectivity profile provided by Truefone. The user can take this ST for SIM solution directly on DigiKey website, and then he can integrate this solution directly into its board or its device. On the other side, Truefone provides the platform and as introduced by Tom, thanks to this platform, the user can activate and remotely manage all ST4 SIM solutions on the field. Thank you. Um, thanks very much, Denny. That was an excellent session. Um, and also thanks to, to Robbie and Tom for your input. Um, let's, uh, let's conclude with a second poll, uh, which will be coming up on your screen now. Here's the poll. The question is, what is the status of eSIM-related projects in your company? And the potential responses are not considering eSIM, actively looking at eSIM for a live project, looking at eSIM deployment in the next six months, and uh, already have deployed eSIM and looking to further extend eSIM deployment. Um, I'll just let the voting settle down for a bit, but it looks like the early running is looking at eSIM deployment uh, in the next six months or so, uh, which uh, yeah, over 40% of the audience have selected. Um, and I think, yeah, that's probably where the voting is going to conclude. So uh, yeah, very soon in terms of uh, project deployment, uh, although obviously some are more mature uh, with uh, solutions already um, deployed. Um, that's about a quarter of respondents. So let's close the poll there and move on uh, to the audience Q&A. Uh, we've, we've had a, a, a lot of responses from the audience. So I'm very grateful to you for that. Um, the first question is to uh, Denny. And the question is, uh, how can I assess eSIM versus iSIM? Uh, Denny, over to you. Okay, thanks. It's it's really a good question. Uh, first, the embedded SIM solution and the integrated SIM solution are really two different solutions, exactly like a SIM card and embedded SIM solution. And from our point of view, this is a different offer. As you might know, the uh, with an integrated SIM solution, you don't have any more a dedicated secure element. All SIM functionalities are directly integrated in the MCU. 
usually a cellular modem. And in fact, several points on the integrated SIM solution are still under discussion regarding the personalization process, security, certification. Several GSMA groups are working on this integrated SIM. So I would like to say for now, we see more demand on the embedded SIM solution. Great, thanks, Denis. Um, let's move on uh, to uh, the second question, uh, and this one will be for Robbie. Uh, Robbie, um, please can you tell us about the availability of eSIMs uh, through electronics distributions channels such as DigiKey? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yes, it, it is available today on, on DigiKey.com. And just for your reference, let me flip back. Uh, I think it was slide number eight that had the part number as well, but easier than all of that, just go to digikey.com on, and on the search bar, just type in eSIM and the SP uh, SIM card or eSIM will come up as, as the first selection. And uh, we also have links to the true phone activation portal uh, right on digikey.com, trying to bring all the elements uh, together. Neat. That's really simplified it. Um, excellent. Let's uh, um, let's move on to the uh, next question. Um, this is a question for Tom. Um, Tom, how do we incorporate eSIM into wearables? Yeah, great, great question. Um, and also, I was going to say in the poll I, that, that first option, uh, not considering eSIM, I didn't think we'd have anyone say that. So it's good, good great attendance and uh, and great great collaboration here. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah, with wearables, wearables are one of the best use, use cases for eSIM. Um, eSIM is, we've already successfully uh, rolled out eSIMs with uh, several, uh, like the Apple Watch, uh, the Samsung smartwatch. Uh, the management of the connectivity in wearables, it's done just like a, any consumer device where the final, the end customer can choose the best connectivity provider where they're located and uh, what works best for them. Uh, definitely due to the design and size of eSIM in the MFF2 or WL SCP formats, uh, you'd use a SIM card. Um, would be used, eSIM would be used. Um, it's no longer a blocker for the device size and all the functionalities. For the carriers, this also means the use of entitlement servers to manage the services and all these types of devices. So, yeah, wearables is, uh, is an ideal. Uh, use case for eSIM, and we're uh, we're seeing, as we mentioned a couple times during the presentation, uh, we're we're seeing uh, the adoption in wearables uh, happening like crazy, starting with Apple and, and the Samsung, but going into the PERS, mobile PERS, all the different uh, um, uh, 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 security uh, verticals and uh, tracking devices and so forth. So really, really great question, and, and we're seeing that adoption rate accelerate like crazy. Great, thank you, Tom. Uh, let's uh, move on to another question. Uh, this one will be for uh, Denny. Uh, the question is, what BPM processes are involved in eSIM and what EUICC subscription management is required for IoT connectivity? Uh, Denny, over to you. Yeah, so in fact, uh, our business model uh, is really simple. We want to provide the best solution and the best support Support to the customer. So that's why I show in my slide one slide where the, you can find ST provide the uh, ST4 SIM solution directly to the customer through uh, DigiKey website. In this case, we are able to support the customer to integrate the ST4 SIM solution to the device. Okay, this is our day to day uh, job. And on the user side, we let the partner, because uh, they are experts on this on this point, um, TruePhone um, provide the network connectivity and all platform services. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, Denny. Um, um, we've got loads of questions coming in. It's very, very, very responsive audience. Um, the next question is to uh, to Robbie. Uh, Robbie, the question is, will eSIM devices be cost competitive with existing data SIM devices? I, I would say a most definite yes. I mean, it, it's a silicon-based device, and the cost curve on integrated circuits, uh, you know, as you know, is coming down year over year. 
And I think cost parity will be achieved in the next year or so as uh, production volumes increase. But really, the benefits to the user, you know, owning and being in control of the connectivity on their own devices, I believe, far outweigh any component cost differences that there may be. So it's, it's really about added features and functionality that's brought on by eSIM and EUICC. I think that's the game changer, especially in IoT. Yeah, interesting. Uh, great. Uh, let's move on. I think we've got time probably for, for one more question. Uh, and this is a question to Tom. Tom, how will large telcos react to increased eSIM adoption given the inherent conflict uh, it, it, it poses to their traditional businesses uh, by lowering barriers to, to people switching out clients, uh, switching out uh, switching operators uh, once things are deployed? Yeah, great, great question. Uh, as you saw in the in the first slides, and we talked about the the uh, growth in IoT with eSIM enabled devices will be in the billions. Um, and as this world is is evolving and growing and revolutionizing, uh, the mobile carriers need to re need they really need to rethink their business models in order to survive this global adoption of IoT. The carriers uh, they need to target OEMs and IoT enablers to sell mobile data by bringing a new flavor of the B2B model to their existing B2C modeling. Uh, the ability to switch between carriers will. I mean, this helps negotiate better rates and improve services for all the end users. So this will help the carriers to bring innovative ways of keeping and building the trust of their existing base of customers. And uh, it creates you know, real positive competition across the carriers. So um, you know, the, the telcos and the, the MNOs, they must evolve and um, get on the train or it'll pass them by. Great. Um, thank you, Tom. I think actually we probably can squeeze one more question. And we've had so many questions come in. Um, so, you know, that's that's great. What, what I will say is after the session, um, DigiKey, Tro Truphone and ST are going to collaborate to come up with a, a kind of frequently uh, asked questions sheet um, so we can answer um, some of the many questions that have come in uh, after the live event. But let's take this as the final question. Um, uh, this is a question I think that Denny is best placed to uh, answer the question is, uh, what certification processes are involved before going to market? Uh, so, uh, Denis, over to you on that one. Yeah, so uh, if I take the ESIM GSMA, uh, GSMA, the GSM Association, define a specific certification process, security process with a dedicated protection profile to guarantee two things. One is about the security, because uh, inside the embedded team we have the credential from the MNO so for sure we have to guarantee the security of this access so and on the other side we have a um, functionality test and with both security and functionality we have the certification uh, stamp from GSMA just to guarantee this uh, this one is interoperable and we can uh, we can download a profile on this on this one great thank you and, uh, sorry Jenny. <laughs> and by by the way you you are able to to see the uh, the certification under the global platform website oh, right that's great to get that resource um we've reached the point where we're going to have to end today's session i'm afraid but uh, many thanks to Denis dubois from uh, st Robbie Paul from DigiKey and Thomas Mason from Truephone. Uh, as I said just now, we're going to collate uh, responses to some of the uh, questions that we've come in. There's been requests for information and specific questions that have come in from multiple different people. That, so we're going to be able to package that up into, a, into an FAQ uh, for all the attendees. Um, so that will be very useful. Um, but I'm very grateful to the audience for, for your attendance and all the great questions uh, we've received today. And, and of course, to the panel for, for their answers to them that we've had just now. Uh, we look forward to welcome, welcoming you to another IoT webinar again soon. And uh, thanks again and uh, goodbye. 